Good morning, folks. This is your Sunday School lesson for April the 26th. Uh, look, I hope you're doing well today. You know, the last couple of weeks, we've discussed the resurrection. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Easter. Uh, and then last week, we looked at implications of the resurrection, uh, primarily that Jesus is Lord because he is who he says he is. And what does that mean for you and me? Well, uh, it, it means that we ought to submit to his authority and his teachings and allow him to lead in our life each and every day. We, uh, we, we celebrate the resurrection. We look forward to one day be, being uh, united with him for all eternity. But today, we submit to his authority and leadership. Well, um, I want to start a new series this week. And, and our new series is entitled Messy Relationships. Look, I don't, I don't know about you, but there's there's sometimes I walk in, I, well, I'll take my office, for instance. I walk in my office and just things are out of place and there's some things that have been stacked up and stored and I just got to clean it out. I, I just need to clean it out in order to work better. Uh, same thing in my garage. Maybe I finished a project and I, I look around and things aren't where they're supposed to be and they're kind of scattered and they're they're here and there and I just have to, I just have to stop and clean it up uh, so that things work better. And so... That can be the same way in our relationship sometimes that we just need to we just need to clear the air. We need to practice some of these these truths from scripture. And so uh, my my plan over the next several weeks is to look at some theological doctrinal teachings in scripture and see how they apply to our relationships with each other. Uh, specifically, the titles of the lessons of the next several weeks: love, encourage, forgive, serve, yield. That one's going to be interesting, and accept, and how they uh, impact our relationship with Christ and with others. But today we're going to talk about love. And so, if you have your Bibles, I, I want you to turn to John chapter fifteen. If you don't, make sure I uh, go ahead and press pause and and get your Bible, uh, something to write with. If you're one of my students, grab that sheet that I, I gave to you in a packet last week, and and let's get ready. So, if you need to go grab those things, that'll be awesome. And uh, go ahead and hit, hit pause to, to do that and come right back. But we're going to be in John 15 today. I want to read for you this morning. I usually just have you just read for yourselves, but I want to read. I'm reading from the New American Standard, John 15, beginning in verse 9. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for loving us. Father, help us to learn what it means to love and then to love each other. Father, may we be blessed by your word today. Change our hearts, teach us, lead us, and guide us. Father, make us more into the image of Christ. And wherever you lead, may we simply and humbly follow you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So when it comes to relationships, there's a couple of things we need to keep in mind. Uh, whenever I have premarital counseling, I discuss with the potential bride and groom or, you know, because they're, they're not in their wedding yet, so I say potential bride and groom. But anyway, I, I, I discuss with the couple uh, some areas where relationships can struggle. And the number one reason that, that I've seen that people come in and they're having problems with their relationship or, or even discussing divorce is a lack of communication. There's a communication breakdown. Now, one may think they're communicating, but the other one's not hearing, then the communication is not working. And it may be the, on the part of the one talking, it may be on the part of the one receiving, it may be both, but communication isn't happening. And so, man, spending time with God is so vital to understanding his love for you. And, and developing that relationship. <clears throat> Look, we say it often, but if you're not spending time with God every day, 
then you're not working on that relationship. It just doesn't mean enough to you. I think that's the bottom line, that, that what Jesus has done on the cross, that his love, it just doesn't mean enough for you if you're not spending time with him each and every day. Does Jesus really mean that much to you? Then why aren't we spending time with him? And I hear people say, I haven't heard from God lately, or he seems distant. I mean, read his word. He has a a word for you. It's Look, I have a copy. I have several copies. They're bound together. It's his word. It's been written and preserved for you. Spend time in God's word. Relationships are built on communication. And so we need to spend time uh, communicating with God. And the other aspect here is faithful obedience. Faithful obedience. Um, I know that sounds kind of harsh, but we've already talked about the fact that he is Lord. And so we're to be obedient to him. Look, I have something here that I, I hope will be helpful. Uh, this is a hinge. Okay? This is a hinge. I want to put some numbers on this hinge, and then we're going to talk about it. You've, you've probably uh, heard people talk about the Ten Commandments before. And maybe you've heard people say that the first portion of those Ten Commandments, so they discuss our re relationship with the Father, our relationship to God. And then the last portion of, the re of those uh, Ten Commandments deal with our relationships with each other. And so, <clears throat> you know, I, I think there's some truth in that. So I'm going to put some numbers here uh, on this hinge. All right. So on one side of this hinge, we have numbers one through four. These are uh, these these deal with our relationship with God. These are the ones that people talk about that say, uh, you know, love the Lord your God with all that that you are. Um, let me, let me pull up the, the Ten Commandments here specifically, and we'll just we'll just walk through them. You know, these are the ones that say, remember the Sabbath day by, by keeping it holy. Um, love, uh, have no other idols, uh, have, have no other idols be, before me. Um, let me see. I had a mark. Here we go, right here. Um, Uh, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol. You shall worship uh, on on the the Sabbath day and and keep it holy. Um, and so these are these are the first four of the Ten Commandments. Now the the last the last few uh, discuss specifically how we are to live in relationship with others, like like we talked about. Um, you know, we, we said you should not covet. That's that's in there. You should not uh, you, you should not lie. You should not bear false witness. Uh, you shall not steal. If you're following along, I'm kind of going from the back to the front. Uh, you, uh, you you should not commit adultery, and you should not murder. And so this is what it would look like if we just have those listed. Now, the one I'm missing is number five. And the reason I have this hinge and the reason I have number five is because I would put number five right on this hinge. Look, bear with me. I, I think it, you'll see that it has application for our uh, text today. And so I want you to look at this. These first four deal with our relationship with God. <clears throat> well, excuse me. These first four, I, I pointed to the wrong ones. These first four and these last five deal with our relationships with others. Okay? <clears throat> this one in the middle is a hinge. It's, it's the hinge point because it is honor your father and mother. The degree to which we can honor our fathers and mothers, which is certainly, which is certainly a earthly relationship with people, it, that's submitting to their authority and their and being obedient to them. That displays how well we also submit to the authority and the obedience to God. And it is like a hinge of the of the Ten Commandments. Look, some people ask, "What's God's will for my life?" Can Can I just give you a clue? Here's here's a one word answer. What is God's will for my life? 
obedience. Obedience. God wants you to obey Him. He wants you to follow Him. He wants you to obey the teachings that He has for you and follow Him. There's a couple of questions that are on your on your discipleship guide. Um, how do we tend to expect, or what do we tend to expect from the people who love us? And then how will we describe connecting, uh, remaining in God's love and obeying His commandments? <clears throat> Look, we've got to quickly go through the next two parts here, the next couple of verses, verse 11 through 12. When I read this, I see, first of all, there's enjoyment there. Then when we abide in Christ and in His love, there's joy. Look, we're not always happy, but because we know who Jesus is, we should occasionally just just be joyful. Um, but let's let's go on down to the the, the next portion here, um, verse specifically more in verse twelve. Listen to this: Jesus showed his love. He was generous. He forgave. He was gracious, kind, merciful, sacrificial. Look, as as a recipient of of God's love. We should also love others in that same way. Just, just a few questions that I have for you. What does it look like to love others the same way that Jesus has loved us? Man, I, I want you to be very practical. I want you to answer that. I want you to take time to answer that question. But then this, I would love to hear answers to you. Like, just text me, uh, send me a send me a response. When have you seen someone else serve or love others? well um, look it's this 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 is a question that just every now and again I stop and I write down where have I seen Christ in whom have I seen Christ and very specific uh, with those with those responses how have we seen the love of Christ in others I think that'll be significant for you and this one's not on your paper either have you ever experienced the joy of loving others as Christ has loved you. Have you done that? Then look over at verses 13 through 14. <clears throat> no one has greater love than this to lay down his life for, for his friends. And this is interesting. Jesus shares that, that we see this. This is just before Jesus is going to go to the cross and you know, uh, pretty pretty soon. And, and with that greatest display of love that we see there. Um, so let me just read this quote for, for you from, uh, from our, the, the lesson. We often put in as little effort as necessary to get a desired result. Man, that's that's pretty tough. You want to be a good athlete, then you need to put in the time and the energy to be a good athlete. You want to be a good student, then you need to spend time studying well. Man, so many of us are complacent just to get by, just to be average, just to do the bare minimum. Look, I know it's true because I know some of you got schoolwork and it's not required, and so you think if it's not required, then I don't want to do it. And that just means that you're just okay being average. Man, do better. Work hard. Push yourself. Strive to be the best. In your studies, strive to, to, to go over the top in loving your family and serving them. Strive to be the best in, in studying scripture. Study to show yourself approved. Man, don't, don't be satisfied with mediocrity. Strive to be the best you can be. And think, think of, think of Jesus. Just, eh, I kind of love him. No, he, he, when he was obedient all the way to the point of death on a cross. But it's not just, uh, like, like I say, it's not just our relationship, but so many things. Sometimes we just put just enough effort just to get by. Um, look, here's here's some uh, a great application for us. List some practical ways that you can demonstrate sacrificial love to others. Don't do just enough to get by. How can you really sacrifice and, and love others well? If you look over on the back of your sheet, you'll see a, a section called community. I want you to really spend some time filling that out, doing, uh, working, working through that. Those are some great ways, some great applications from this lesson today. Look, I love you. Um, I hope this lesson uh, hits home. Love others well. And greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. If you don't know the love of Christ, I pray that you do today. Reach out to me. I'd love to share that with you. And then is there somebody that you need to love, that you need to strive to love 
um, in, a, in a sacrificial way. Take care, and I hope you have a wonderful day.